Can you all hear me now? All right, I forgot I had the little thing of a jig in there. Let me go back. Okay, it's Nikki Smith, y'all. Knowledge by Nikki with 1K. And uh, can you all hear me now? Is that is that pop? Let me see. Can you all hear me now? Somebody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me now. And uh, great. One thing that I have learned, I forgot I had my little thing plugged in there to use my selfie stick. Uh, I'm here. Let me tell you where I'm at again. Y'all didn't hear that. I'm in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm sitting on the side of the pool at the Hyatt Place, which is across the street from the Hyatt House in San Juan City Center. I'm sitting here because I came down here to get a little R&R, &R, but I also came down here to get my Money Does Matter conference solidified. So we're going to be here next. Actually, it's going to be uh, two weeks later than originally planned. It's going to be May 17th and 18th, and I have both hotels. It's going to be at the Hyatt Place and the Hyatt House, guys, and it's going to be off the chain. So we're going to have pool parties, game night. Uh, we having a movie night, guys. We got a big old screen. We're going to sit out here and... Uh, it's going to be uh, all-you-can-eat all food. It's going to be open bar, and we're going to have a movie night. And the movie is going to be the uh, black industry or the black culture as it pertains to money. I got a couple movies I'm working on because this conference is about money. It's about us understanding that when you don't get a check, you have to see your money different, think of it differently, and do different with it. Or you're going to get 20 years down the line, be tired of doing hair, and have absolutely no options that have been created for yourself. So I'm dealing with that in all capacities. So tomorrow, actually, I was too tired and too hot today. I'm going to go around and show you all the different places that we're going to be, be actually doing this event at. So I'm sitting here, and, I, and I'm actually kind of thinking about a conversation that I had maybe two weeks ago. And I won't mention the name. But I had a conversation with one of the, the, the world's biggest influencers in the beauty industry. I'm talking about the one that got the little blue check behind their name. I had a conversation, and actually I had two. I had one with a guy, one with a girl. Both of them are in that blue check status, but one is definitely a lot further than the other. So I had a conversation with them, and this is what I want to convey to you all that are chasing being like someone else. I want to say to you, based off of the information they gave me. Everything is not what it seems. Let me say that first. We are running around here trying so much or so hard to be like someone else because we're only looking at either the status, what we think is status, or the financial part of it, and we are not celebrating or even learning who we really are. And I know it's difficult in a world where individuality is not applauded, you know, when you're individual or you do things that are a little wayward or you, you kind of own a whole nother page with everybody else, you're either called strange, that's crazy, nobody walks that line with you because they know it's too risky, it may or may not work, and, and you find yourself being an alien. I've been that way all my life, so I get it. But I wanna tell you something that I can honestly say I've lived through it I didn't understand it younger, but I can tell you that there is nothing more fulfilling than living 100% authentically. There is nothing. At the end of the day, when you have to come back home and you have to deal with you, that you've been somebody else all day, all week, all month, which unfortunately is what's kind of happened with some of our celebrity or our Insta famous or our YouTube famous stars. What has happened with them is they started off doing something authentically. And this, I'm getting from their mouths. They've started off doing something authentically. And then because it blew up and because it, you know, got a million followers or more and they got the blue check, naturally, the companies are going to want to jump on that bandwagon because now they can build their business with something they did nothing to create. And be careful, y'all, because I'm also hearing the dollar amounts that some of these co companies are throwing at people that are YouTube sensations or that have built a following. And we think it's a lot of money because we're used to grinding and hustling for our money. But a company with a million dollar budget, a marketing budget that throws you 50 grand or throws you five grand a year or six grand a year, y'all do realize that ain't no money, right? Not for them. And a lot of us are just saying, oh, yes, let me take it. That's good because we used to grinding for that 5,000. We used to grinding. For that 10,000. So to us, it's money we don't have to grind for. But let me tell you what happens. And this is what made me do this video. 
when this happens and then now you sign these contracts and now you become owned or now you become obligated by these companies to do X, Y, Z, this, that, and the other. Many people that have taken on that because you, I get it. I'm 32 years in the game. You get tired of hustling for your money. I get it. But when you take other people's money, be careful because now you're under obligation to do something that you really just did for fun. Now you have to do X amount of videos. Now you have to do X amount of appearances. Now you don't have a choice. And what starts to happen is you now, the, the foundation that built you that was authentically you, which may have been your clients. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm all about evolution and I'm all about growing and evolving and, and stopping doing this and then going into that. But be careful why you do it because what people don't realize is that thing that you see on that camera or that video or that stage presentation, that, that is not who they are all the time. But when you take people's money and now you have to be that girl or that guy all the time, it becomes incredibly exhausting. It becomes, you can't never not wear no makeup. You can't never let your hair down. You can't never show a, a soft or a weaker side of you. You can never do that. And let me tell you, I'm hearing from the mouths of the people who are in that position. They getting paid 10, 20, 30, 40 grand a year for showing up and doing X, Y, Z. But when they talk to somebody like me who they know they can be 100% real with, they crying, they tired. They're like, but none of this is really getting me to what I really wanted to do. Or none of this is really who I really am. None of this is real. I didn't start this for this reason, but now I've taken their money and I gotta do it now. I don't have a choice. And because I've given up my foundation, what am I gonna do now? If I don't do it, then I lose that money too. And and I'm telling you, I hear the tears. I hear it. And I feel bad for them. Because I didn't have people throw some really sizable money my way. I didn't have some people throw some stuff my way. But I was just one of those that believed in living authentically even as a child. I don't care if everybody go left. I don't want to go left. I'm going right. I don't. And I've always naturally had the personality that if it wasn't me, I don't care about if that's what everybody does. And so peer pressure didn't bother me. I don't. I don't care about turning down 250 grand. I've turned down some money, y'all, because it wasn't it wasn't what I was about. But I realize everybody can't do that. So I say to you again, you have got to spend more time and energy really figuring out who you are and what makes you authentically you. And yes, that does mean that even times when you're bleeding, girl. I tell people, you don't never know what you will really do or not do until they catch you when you're bleeding. They catch you when you got more bills than money. They catch you when you got to sacrifice your kids and they can't go here when you got to take them out of private school and when you got to let your house go into foreclosure because you don't have the money to keep it up. I done been through all of that, guys. Trust me when I say I know what it means when they catch you when you need really, really bad and you tired of going to work slaving for 17 hours and doing things that you 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 really authentically love it but it's just not bringing you the return you think you should get or at least fast enough and so here your savior comes in your mind god has sent me this angel this company that even though they want me to do something that's not quite like what i really want to do but they're gonna pay me five thousand dollars six thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a month i need to take that be careful guys because when, as you get older, and as the older people used to say to me, and I didn't get this until maybe five years ago, they used to say, keep living. As you keep living, and as you start really developing, becoming comfortable, and learning you, you find yourself in this internal war. Because you're, in you're in war with what pays you, and you're at war with what truly allows you to be who you are. And I'm telling you, it is a hard decision to make i have had to make it many times and i just have gotten real comfortable with saying no nah, that that ain't what i do and i ain't gonna do it and i have had to literally sever partnerships of relationships that i thought they were authentically on the same path that i'm at but they're not i've had to buy out partners i can every morning when i get up i need to know that i can live my best life and the only person that I need to try to be better than or like 
is my last self, my, my yesterday self. The only person I'm trying to measure up to is who I was yesterday and do better than that. That is the only person that I am trying to be. Now, I take a look. I listen to everybody's YouTube channels. And I love taking advice from people and tweaking it or trying it and seeing if it works for me. And But I'm not trying to be them. I'm not trying to be a clone of them. I'm not trying to emulate what they do and and get to the places they've gone to or gotten to the same way. Now, we all want to make money. We all want to be secure and be financially free. But part of you finding that space is finding where your authentic self rides, where it exists, where it needs to be, where it's the most. Let me tell you something. When you find that place, and I'm going to tell y'all because I am a living testament to it. When I really found what ultimately makes me happy. I was still even happy when I was broke. When I say broke, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm like, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul, but I wasn't doing it at the expense of just turning down a deal. I was doing it because I was being a bad steward of my money and I had to fix that. But I wasn't in that position or I wasn't wealthy because I was wealthy living somebody else's life. I'm gonna tell you, and this may sound crazy to you, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be poor being me than rich being somebody else. And I mean that because at the end of the day, that is not going to satisfy you. That's not going to bring you the peace that you need. The goal is to find what makes you authentically you, which means you got to say no to some stuff and to build on that, to learn how to expand that gift. God says he'll, he'll, you, your gift will make room for you. It will. You got to believe that. And that also means sometimes you're going to have to ride through the process. It ain't going to happen overnight. Everybody is not going to be an overnight sensation. Don't, I'm telling you, don't buy into that. Why is it that you think, if you even take the celebrity circuit, I don't care whether it's music or whether it's uh, uh, hairstyling or whatever it is, you take the celebrity circuit and you look at a lot of them as they've built their careers. What starts to happen is the older they get and the more they don't really want to be that girl that or that guy that they got known for, you see them doing less. You see them going behind the scenes. You see them evolving into spaces that allow them to be more authentic and not have to fit the mold. And we see it all the time. They did what they either had to do or thought they had to do to get where they're trying to go, but now they want to live their authentic selves. Now they don't want to be under a microscope every minute of the day. They they have figured out that this is really not who I am. So I need to do something different. And I'm saying this to all of you all. Look, hold on, I'm gonna turn around. Y'all see that? Y'all see that little thing over there? That little thing over there, guys? A little gecko, I'm over here in San Juan. As long as don't none crawl over here, we good. I've been to San Juan. This will probably be my eighth time being to San Juan. Literally, guys, I love this place. I wanna buy some real estate here. I'm trying to see if I can buy me a condo and Airbnb, Airbnb it out. Uh, I'm really looking into that while I'm here. I'll be here for the next three days, guys. But what I'm saying to you all, y'all come see me. I got a conference called Money Does Matter. And what I'm trying to get people to realize is everybody's desiring to have this, 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 this. They want to be rich, but they don't understand. It's a difference of being rich and wealthy. It's a very big difference in that. Being rich is just having money. Being wealthy is you understanding that you have to create sustainable wealth and you gaining the wisdom to maintain and to sustain the riches that you have got gotten that's why a lot of people that are rich are now broke because they didn't get the wisdom the knowledge the learning of how to leverage their money and how to grow it in ways that you don't have to grind for it and how to use it to give and plant seeds to others and that's when you become wealthy that's a wealth mindset that's not being rich so my conference I'm doing here, I'm in San Juan. My husband said he's going to come down in a minute. He don't like heat, though, so he may not be down here. But I'm in San Juan, and I'm getting everything solidified, guys, at the Hyatt Place and the Hyatt House. I'm going to have it between the two guys, and I'm here in San Juan City Center. And you know what's great is right across the street, guys, is the Sheridan Hotel. Let me see if I can flip this. Y'all see the Sheridan Hotel? Hold on. Let me flip this for y'all. Can y'all see? Let me see. Can y'all see that? You might be able to see the Sheridan through the trees there, but I don't know if you can or not, but that's why I got married, guys. I got married at that Sheridan right across the street, guys. 10 years ago, 
I got married at the Sheridan on the rooftop. I said, whoa, I'm back. I didn't even realize that I had chosen a hotel across the street. So we're going to go over there and we're going to just sit on the, the, the rooftop where we got married and just enjoy and just have a good time. But what, I, what I'm getting to, guys, is I want you to live authentically. I want you to be who you are in every sense of the word, personally, professionally, I don't care what it is. But I also want you to get better at the resources that God is giving you, how to use them, what to do, what not to do, how to read your money, how to understand what does this mean. I have dedicated this conference. Now, obviously, beauty is my background, and I love my stylists and my owners and all this other, the other industry people, but this conference, as I say, is for anybody who don't get a check. I actually now am I'm coaching personal trainers. I'm coaching event coordinators. I'm coaching people who are just like us. They got to figure it out client by client and figure out how to grow it and how to leverage it. And so I'm inviting all of you all. I got people that own real estate companies and they still are, are client based businesses and they're trying to figure out how to do this and not have to go substitute this with another job that they absolutely hate doing. They don't want to do it. Don't nobody. Don't nobody want to work at the bank and do hair part time. Nobody wants to work at the bank and really do real estate part time. We're doing this because we don't really know what to do with the money that we have. We don't understand how to build these businesses in a way that they are financially sustaining. Come see me, guys. I am in San Juan. We will be in San Juan next year. Actually, I switched the dates from April 27th and 8th, I believe, to May 17th and 18th next year. So if you go on my website, knowledgebynikki.com, you'll see those dates. I'm actually sitting here with my whole bag. I'm going to do all of that here. And I'm going to switch the dates. But I got payment arrangement, guys. When I say I have, they have shown me much favor here. And I am literally, they gave me, I'm going to be able to have an exclusive pool party. I got the whole, I'm going to have a game night for the guys. We got pool tables, all of that. Um, I got everything like exclusively, guys. They gave me the whole lobby to do vendors. I mean, when I say they hook me up, y'all, they hook me up with some really great stuff. And I, I just can't wait for you all. And I ain't trying to make you drink like you fish, but I got open bar. I, I mean, I am down here. The lady that is actually helping me with this conference, God bless her ministry. Cause I mean, I came in thinking it's going to be one way. She's like, no, I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna give you that. And I'm gonna give you that. And I'm gonna give you that. I said, well, to God be the glory for that. So we're going to be here guys. That's right, Kendra. You are here because you own the roster, whether you know it or not, Kendra. You already own the roster. I just didn't tell you yet. All right? But I am down here. I'm chilling. I'm sitting in my bathing suit. I'm chilling on the side of this pool where these people out here swimming. And I just want to encourage more of you all to be authentically you. Be you. Don't spend all your energy trying to be somebody else because... At the end of the day, even if it pays you, you're going to one day get to the point where you're going to be miserable. You're going to be miserable. If everybody rich was happy, you wouldn't have people killing themselves. You know what's interesting? My husband, we were sitting around the table eating breakfast today, and he happened to pull down something he found online about Epstein, the guy that was, you know, on trial at the New York jail and was and killed himself. And he started, they had his whole financial dashboard on there and it was you know his house over here 63 million and it i mean it was a serious portfolio guys serious portfolio that man had real money we and we t they said he had 56 million liquid just cash that man had real money so by the time they got through adding up everything he has stocks homes i mean it was actually i told my husband to send it to me because i'm going to do a snapshot and talk about that um he had real money of 578 million like real money, like money he can go and, and get it and he ain't got to wait for two years to, to let it, you know, add up or let it actually reconcile. No, he had money he can go put his hands on, but he killed himself. And we know there's a lot of speculation about the what, the why, the how. But my point is just attaining riches and not living the way God intended you to live, being you. There's a reason God gave us all different fingerprints. There's a reason that it's only you that can put your fingerprint on your phone and open it. There's a reason because it's only one of you. And I see so many people, especially the young ones who, it's this whole identity crisis. And it's not just millennials. It's everybody spending so much energy. Now I believe again in learning from other people, but everybody's spending so much energy trying to be somebody else that they lose 
who they are. They wake up at 50 and have no idea who they are and they're miserable because even though they got the money, they're not happy. True happiness, true authentic happiness can only come with you being who God intended you to be. Spend more energy there. And even it might be the slower road. I tell people, yes, you don't get there overnight. But the, the thing is also beautiful about it is you also get the lesson. You don't skip steps. And then when life happens, because you, you skip all five of these steps and went straight from two to 10, you have no idea how to manage the stress of things that happen in life because you never spent time trying to, you didn't want to go through nothing. So you just want to get there and maybe something you did got you there, but can it keep you there? Can it keep you there? Because you don't know how you got it. You don't know what to do with the money you've attained from it. So you subsequently end up broke. And because you spent so much time just trying to be like somebody else, you don't even know the necessary steps to rebuild your life. One thing I thank God for, when my world crashed and my life crumbled, and I didn't get it at the time, and I tell everybody it was the worst time of my life, but what I thank God so much for now, I knew the steps that I took to get it there. And guess what I did? I said, well, look, I wasn't always, I ain't always had $5. I ain't always had two. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. And I remember writing and I had this huge dry race board. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all, these things are running all over. Y'all see those things? Oh my God. Don't y'all laugh at me. Let me get my, I have my feet on the ground, guys. The gecko just ran past my feet. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Let me put my feet up in the chair. But as I was saying, guys, the thing that I loved was the fact that I understood the process. I knew what it took to get me. Look, now you know how when you see stuff, now you feel like everything on you. Don't y'all laugh at me. I'm going to have to maybe go somewhere else. These little things are crawling all over, right? So I knew how I got there. So for me, I said, you know what? I wasn't always here. Let me write out. I literally wrote out the steps how I got to where I wanted to be in the first place. And what happened was I got away from it. Life had taken me away from it by me trying to figure out all this other stuff and being terrible with my money and trying to, you know, okay, I just got to take this $20 and try to make it 40 and try to make it 50. Not really thinking about the process, not really thinking about the process and how it's going to work. So what I did, I said, let me stop. Let me do what Gregory McKeon says was I, uh, essentialism. If you all are familiar with the video or with what I'm talking about, it's a book called Essentialism. It's one of the top five that I've ever read. What it talks about is creating space in your life to grow. You have to sometimes just push pause and say, you know what? Stuff ain't going the way I need it to go. I'm going to have to chill, sit down, create some space, which means time. You create time to think, time to regroup, time to structure. That may even mean, I remember when I first started doing it, People would ask me to do things and I would say, you know what? I can't do that right now because even though they were paying me and God knows I needed the money, but I couldn't do it. I said, y'all, I can't do it. I, I, need to, I need to pause right now. I need to think. I need to process how to get from where I am and back to the process or the road that I know will get me back on track. But the thing is, for those of y'all that want to just get somewhere quick, you don't even have that to go back to. You don't even have that to refer back to. I had it. To refer back to I understood the process and when I wanted to get my money right that's exactly what I did I said stop Nick because you ain't always been this stupid with money there was a time you were kind of smart so what did I do then that I'm not doing now and y'all when I say I went back to the drawing board it took me two years and probably not even two years to go from being behind the eight ball to way in front of the eight ball and it's and one thing because i was authentically living life according to what i knew was about me and i had scaled down and i said i'm not trying to do 15 things no more let me pick two let me focus let me do less for more which is what that book talks about and it changed my life it literally changed my life guys and i was able to fast track save money get out of debt Oh, I mean, I did that thing. I said, oh, no, 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 because I ain't doing this. But I literally, I went back and I thought, what did I do? And I went and I took those strategies and obviously I enhanced them because I've learned more. And that's what I did, guys. 
But it's difficult to do that when you don't know the process because you're too busy trying to be Insta famous and Facebook famous and get YouTube to pay you. And ain't nothing wrong with that as long as you're being who you authentically are, then it's smart. If you're going to use those vehicles to help you stretch and leverage what you do, fine. But if what you're doing on those channels is not who you are, you're going to crash and burn mentally, if not physically. I'm telling you, I hear the tears of the people who have done this. And they're like, if I knew what I knew now, but now they don't have a choice. They got to eat. They got kids to take care of. They got mortgages to pay. They got to live. And they've allowed these companies that threw these bones at them, which was nothing for the company. They allowed them to basically say, I'm going to pay you. And we go, you just put us on your platform and you use our product in your video and you do this and that and the other. And they took so many of these deals that now they can't do hair no more. They can't do the things that really, really allowed them to be who they were and the thing they love. Now they got to work for the company. Now they are hostage. They just got a different master. That's all. They are hostage to these companies and they can't quit. So now this is what starts to happen, guys. And so again, I tell you, I'm sitting here in Puerto Rico. When I say I'm chilling, I came out here. I knew I had a meeting with the lady that's organizing this. You all go on my website, knowledgebynikki1k.com. Check out my website. The conference is called Money Does Matter. I'm sitting here now about to change some other things. But I got I payment arrangements. I got all of that, guys. It's going to, again, it's all inclusive. It includes your hotel. It includes your food, real food. Now, you got to get yourself here now. I ain't doing all that. But we're going to have city tours. We're going to have pool parties. I got a game night for the guys. We got a movie night, guys. We got a 121-inch inflatable screen. The hotel has allowed us to have the entire outdoor space, which is off the chain. I Meaning ain't nobody there but us. I'm going to show you a movie. It's about black people and money and how it has evolved from slavery to now. I can't wait till y'all see it. This is what I want us to do. Be you but learn how to become wealth-minded being you, okay? So y'all just do that for me, but I'm going to sit and chill. I'm sweating, but it's a good sweat because it is beautiful out here, guys. It is so beautiful. Um, I'm going to see if my husband, if he faked me out, he probably didn't fell asleep in the room, but I got my computer. I got my little iPad. I'm going to watch a movie. I work to movies, and I'm going to sit out here and chill. We just had the best food of life at La Las Casa Blanco, oh my God. So I'm gonna have some pictures for y'all later. I, mean, I had stuff, I had avocado stuffed with shrimp, guys. Oh my God. Avocado stuffed with shrimp and all these uh, garnishes of onion and uh, cilantro. And then they served it to me with, uh, they call it mufanco or something like that. It's, it's basically mashed plantains. And oh my God, I'm in seventh heaven, y'all. So I ate some Bobby. I see my husband on here now. You're supposed to be down here with me, not watching on Facebook. Okay, that's Bobby Madison. That's my husband. Get downstairs. He's watching me on Facebook. But I'm going to sign off, y'all. So you all keep looking for my Money Does Matter conference information tomorrow. He's going to actually be filming while I do a whole live. We're going to go from place to place to place, show you what we're doing in uh, San Juan. We are having a great time, guys. Uh, so I'm going to sign off. So you all remember, money does matter, but it is better to be broke in you than rich in somebody else. All right? Deuces.